Fuck. <laughs> you. Oh! Get from me, fucking move the chair, move the chair! You! Jump from your knees! Go on! Show! Right, lovely boys. Let's have a look at you. Disgusting! Never have I seen such a display of blatant puffery. <laughs> Never in all my life! But the Colonel did give us permission to hold a dress rehearsal, Sergeant Major. A dress rehearsal, Sergeant Major? <laughs> May I ask what it is you is rehearsing? Yes, Sergeant Major, we're rehearsing. Shut up! <laughs> Colonel Sugden, you will tell me all about it. It's a French cuff scene, Sergeant Major. <laughs> it's called A Night in Montmartre. It's all about low life in Paris. What are you two supposed to be? We're a pair of French streetwalkers. <laughs> and you? Oh, no, you don't understand. Shut up! <laughs> right, on a command move, I want you to get all the books you was reading at the moment and put them on that chart point. Now, move! Oh, what is that? What is The Colonel has asked me to conduct a survey as to the state of your minds. Colonel Graham. Yes, Sergeant Major. What is the state of your mind? A stagnating, Sergeant Major. A stagnating, Sergeant Major. <laughs> you. Useless by James Joyce. <laughs> Whose is this? It's mine, Sergeant Major. Useless just about sums you up. <laughs> Actually, it's Ulysses by James Joyce, Sergeant Major. <laughs> it concerns the peregrinations of an apostate theological... I know what it's all about! <laughs> Ulysses. <laughs> He was a character in Greek men, uh, Miss. Uh, well, I'm glad somebody's reading the classics. <laughs> Anthony Burgess writes in his uh, introduction to an edition of Ulysses. The great novels of the past, Don Quixote, Tom Jones, War and Peace, have all been very long. And it's only in great length that novelists can fulfil their blasphemous urge to rival God. To create a few human beings in a segmentary context of life is well enough for the minor artist, but the major writer wants a whole cosmos and the whole of mankind. He cannot really have all this. Joyce, like Blake, was able to achieve it only by making one character play many parts. But he can at least create a huge human community which is a sort of reduced image of the cosmos. Joyce uses imaginative flights and spells of delirium to accommodate a great deal of human history and even the end of the world itself. Bloom must not only eat, but micturate, defecate, and for good measure, masturbate. Molly, his wife, must meditate uh, not only on her lovers, uh, but on how her lovers behave in bed. The main subject of the book may be summed up as the creative relationship between spiritual father, spiritual son, and non-spiritual mother-wife mistress. The fundamental purpose of any work of art is to impose order on the chaos of life as we live it. In imparting a vision of order, the artist is doing what the priest or religious teacher does. But the religious revelation is less a creation than a discovery, whereas the artist feels, God rather than God's servant, that he is the author of order. The creation of a human community in fiction is the closest the novelist can get to the creation of a cosmos. But Joyce is ambitious enough to want to create a human body, chapter by chapter, organ by organ, which is a sort of configuration, as in Blake or Swedenborg, of the ultimate celestial order. This is perhaps less blasphemous than it looks. It may even be taken as a gesture of piety. It certainly can be taken as Joyce's attempt to build for himself an order, uh, which is a substitute for the order he abandoned, uh, when he abandoned the church. Ulysses is a story 
about the need of people for each other. And Joyce regards this theme as so important that he has to borrow an epic form in which to tell it. The invocation of the Odyssey may reduce Ulysses to bloom, but it also exalts bloom to Ulysses.